Hey Bob Blog, how you friendly folks doing? So, let's start with Niall because talking about myself and Kevin who started the topic doesn't make any sense. So Niall clearly does not have any, any problems with fears of missing out and is therefore better than all of us. Um, we should all pay him taxes because that's how governments work, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um, but yeah, so uh, that, that's, that's a, a place I think it's fairly similar to where I am. You just, you get to this point where you don't care so much. Like you, you maybe for different reasons. Like I always know that something's going to be on somewhere and that you're going to miss out on everything. So why worry about it? And Niall's more of, yeah, whatever, stuff happens. And there's a lot of it. I also sympathize with a lot of what Luke said. Um, and that if you are missing out on something, just go do it. Which is, of course, as he kind of alluded to, a sort of very privileged thing to say. Like, yeah, tons of people would just go and do it if they had the means to be able to do it. And yeah, it's very much something that I, mean, I struggle with a little bit. But, like, it's hard. It's hard and I've been struggling with it more. Um, to realize that, yes, I can do things, but other people can't. Um, and I sort of wondered about that a little bit when making last week's video. And it's sort of a, a touchy topic. Um, and then Jocelyn is sort of the other side of the coin where she's perhaps transitioning more to Niall's point of view. Um, but she's feeling sort of, again, the other side of the coin. I should have said that phrase there instead. Um, where, yeah, she'd love to be able to do that type of stuff. Um, and that would be a very simple way for her to solve her problems. But does not have the means to be able to do so. Um, and so that's a very real case of the solution of just go do it doesn't, doesn't really solve most people's problems. Um, and that it's, it's more of a... If, if you can't solve all your problems with money, um, then it's more of an emotional problem that you have to work through. And that's, that, that, whole, that whole thought process that I just went through uh, it got me a little, little, little upset. Um, I'm not gonna lie. But, you know, we're here, and uh, let's move on. So, the other sort of theme I kind of picked up from last week that I thought we can try to carry forward into this coming week is a little bit tied to social, social problems, and more formally stated, friendships. Um, how do you manage friendships? Because those seem to be at the heart of all of my social problems. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be like an uncommon thing, like the story Luke talked about where he had friends that he was hanging out with and then got socially, socially anguished um, and just walked away from them to see what would happen and then just kept walking, um, which I'm sorry. Uh, I've, I've, I've been in groups of friends like that, which is why I use the friends air quotes. So anyway, what is your methodology and ways that you keep your friends, your friends and not just people that you have happen to know and have acquaintances. Because recently, um, and this has been sort of an ongoing development over the last couple of years, my friends have been, like broken apart into two very separate camps. I have my work friends, which I don't really interact with that much outside of work. Um, and I guess more generally the school friends you could call them. Um, that might be the right classification, but most of them are for work um, from work. They all go to the same school, obviously we work for the school. Um, and then a couple of other people who are friends from outside of work. And for the most part, I hang out with those people only at school. Um, and I'm not really sure why. It's just kind of happened that way. Um, and then on the other side, I have all my internet friends, which I came to a very interesting realization the other day. I don't have like real time communication with most of my internet friends. Um, and these are people that I probably communicate more with than a lot of people, but it's all like staggered. Like I'll send a tweet at someone and they'll respond back. Like I've talked to Kevin, um, obviously Kevin from blah, 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 once in my entire life in like a real time setting where I could say something and he could immediately say something like in person. Um, and that was a Buffer Festival 2013. We haven't had Skype calls like the whole like blog log back channels have always, always been text communications. I've never like talked on a phone or anything 
to Niall or Jocelyn or Luke. And it was literally just at VidCon um, that I had like my first, I talked to DK, um, who you might remember, who used to be on this channel before, um, for the f very first time. And that was a really weird realization that I can basically just go back through like chat histories and build every conversation I've ever had with all of my internet friends. Um, I'm gonna stop using the qualifier internet friends. Uh, I, well, I don't know, I kind of broke it down into two different groups of people. I don't know, so basically during the day I have one set of friends and during the evenings I'll come home and try to hang out with other groups of friends. And the strategies and like things I do to try to hang out and have fun with these people are completely and totally different. For my internet friends, a lot of the time I'm trying to figure out ways for us to do things together. Um, and, and I don't know, I, I put a lot of energy um, into trying to organize those types of things because I, I personally acknowledge that having internet friendships is very tricky because if at least one side of the, like, and we're social, like, I don't know, I, I try not to be socially awkward, but it happens all the time. Um, we're, we're these socially awkward internet people, which is a, I try not to do or try not to say because I think it's sort of wrong. Um, and it's like, oh, I'm a quirky person. It's like, it's like just saying that, which there's nothing wrong with saying that. I just, I think it's overused. Um, and so I try not to use that stereotype, but I'm gonna use it in this case and scenario because I think it actually fits. Um, so we will, we will tend to drift apart just because we don't know what to say or we don't want to like offend the other person. And so a lot of the times I'll try to be like the motivating factor behind like organizations and meetups and stuff like that. Um, and even doing that, I get very worried that am I too overbearing? Do these people hate me? Like, why would they want to hang out with me? But then I'm just like, well, if they really didn't like me, they'd probably just block me and then they wouldn't get my silly messages. And I just, I just try to power through it. It's because unlike the school friends, they're, they're not forced to see me every day. If they don't want to see me anymore, if they think I'm being too overbearing or too, too coming on too strong, I guess, um, and they can just disappear, and I will never ever have contact with them again, which is a which is a sad thought. But I figure that's that's a better alternative than just slowly drifting apart and never talking to each other ever again. Just not because of lack of interest in interacting with people, just because of social anxiety on both parts of not wanting to drive the other person away. And so, I don't know. It 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 becomes difficult a little sometimes um, when it. It's just, it, it feels like nothing works out right for totally different reasons. And I'm, after, like time after time, I'm trying to organize stuff with like a whole bunch of different groups. I have a couple of different groups of internet friends. Vlogalog is clearly one of them. I have another group um, that we mostly do like Google Hangouts and stuff because the group is spread really far apart. Um, and then I have other, I have other friends that I, will sometimes try to interact and even try to arrange sort of physical meetups. It's never happened, um, but we're close enough together that I hope it does someday. And so yeah, that's that's the group of, that's that's my policy on friendships. And like, I, I suppose I should really be trying to do the same thing with my real life friends and try to be like, we're probably fairly compatible people, we're just drifting apart because neither side is taking initiative. Um, and it, it's probably my terrible fault. <laughs> well, probably not, I, I, not, no more my fault than it is the people on the other side. But it's just weird, I was thinking about it today. Like I mostly come home and just hang out on the computer and don't do anything in the evenings 99% um, of the time. Occasionally, like as you've seen, Sean, one of my friends will come over, but he's like the only person I've ever had in my house. <laughs> which is kind of sad a little bit, but it, it's just never like occurred to me to try to try to do that. I don't know. I just, I just assume come home and hang out with my internet friends that I don't, I don't see that often um, or talk to. I don't know. Maybe I'm just terrible at friendships. Maybe. Who knows? Anyway, 
But anyway, what are you guys' thoughts on managing friendships online and offline? Um, and how, how do you go about it and what are your fears and how do you overcome them? Um, and I look forward to hearing the responses, both from the other people and the people in the chat. That probably goes without saying now. I've probably been saying it that a lot. I don't know why I got really quiet there for a minute. Anyway, I'm almost out of time. Um, well, not really. I could just start it. Whatever. Goodbye, Vlog Vlog. Have a wonderful week. Bye!